Brad, he goes, dang, I guess she really did need that. Uh, <laughs> and then him and Mr. Milk were talking about me while I was sleeping. And Mr. Right. Mr. Gonzalez, okay. you know what I said earlier counts because I knew the power source. I didn't know the full name, but I knew the power source. Did you, right, well, we'll, you, well, you only okay. asked for what powers it. You didn't ask for the name of what powers it. And I <laughs> crystal. We'll negotiate after class. That's good. All right. So we've been dealing with, so yesterday you had your test, but we've been dealing with um, cost facing producers. And we've been talking about um, we've been talking about economic concepts in general, and then we looked at free market versus command, oh. things like that. So we last left off with this idea of cost facing producers. My my Gonzalez cost cafe, as Cedric calls it, the, and we calculated how much does it cost, right, to make one cup of coffee, and then we said, okay, if we sold that one cup of coffee then we would make like 60 cents. Let's just mm. round it. All right. Mm. Well, that's assuming though that we can sell it for a dollar. What if we could sell it for $5? Then in that case, then we would make $4 and 60 cents. So how do we know what to sell a product for? And that's what we're going to be looking at the next couple of days. We're going to break this down because I know you guys are on Zoom. I don't want to go. We'll go the full time here, but I won't go over. But that's what we're going to be looking at. Because in a free market economy like ours that we've been talking about, you are sovereign from price. You don't have to buy that water at 50 cents. You don't have to buy this lightsaber at $20. You don't have to buy that phone at $50 or, or sorry, $5,000 or $1,000, right? Okay. So, but when you go to McDonald's, when you go to McDonald's and you go to the drive-thru, they just tell you the price, right? And you just pay. It. You've never been like, hey, uh, make that a dollar and I'll buy it, right? And then they, in turn, a producer has never asked you the price of anything. But yet there they are. There are the, these prices are out there in a free market. And so that's what we're going to look at. How, how do producers and consumers not talk to each other, but at the same time, do talk to each other through their actions and get to this thing called an equilibrium price. All right, so today, that was my little intro spiel. Here we go. So today, I want you to think like a consumer. What kind of C is that? Uh, it's like over an here, F. Like on the, I, I was, it looks like an F. Yeah. But I had it. I had to do it. <laughs> I was like, there's my first consumer. Think like a consumer. Don't worry about the producer today. Do not worry about that producer. We don't care about producers today. I'm not thinking about anything. <laughs> I'm just what you say. All right. So, as a consumer, we demand things, right? And today I'm going to use this lightsaber here to talk to you about talk to you about my kids' demand and, gen and demand in general. Should've, should've bought, it was like 338 price, now it's 344. I'm just like watching it as I lecture. I thought I was waiting, I thought it was waiting. Right, sorry. Okay, here we go. So what is demand? We, we, whether it's a burger or a phone or a car or a lightsaber, what is demand? Demand is the willingness, desire, and ability to purchase a product a certain price. The willingness, desire, and ability to purchase product at a certain price. So when you look at this definition and I ask you this question, how many of you demand a million dollar house? How many of you demand a million dollar house? Me. 
right? So if you, but if you look at this definition in order, true demand, true demand has three things in it. It has willingness. So yeah, we might be willing to buy a million dollar house. It has to have desire. Oh yeah. Not many people will turn down the opportunity to probably live in a million dollar house. But then it has to have this third element, right? Look at this third element. Don't remind me, I don't have the ability to buy a million dollar house. Very good. So what is our demand, unless I don't know something secretly about you, for a million dollar house? Pretty much all of us have a zero demand for a million dollar house. This would, um, be, a, this would be a good quiz question for next Wednesday. What are the three elements of demand? He's Willing giving you a hint. Hint, 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 hint. Hint, hint. Um, All right. Mr. Gonzalez. What's up, buddy? I'd prefer to live in a million dollar bunker instead of a million dollar house because the million dollar bunker is safer. Especially around me with my lightsaber. Yeah, they do have those. <laughs> All right. So. What is the law of demand? This is why the demand curve slopes, and then we're going to put downward. The law of demand. You guys, you guys know the law of demand. All right, pick a product in your head. Just everybody, just just for a second, just pick a product in your head that you would buy. All right, think about the price of what that product is normally that you buy it at. Oh, I have 50,000 products in my head right now. Just pick one. <laughs> like, I picked one and now they're all 50,000? <laughs> More like a million. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, double the price. Double the price of that product. Does your ability, willingness, and desire for that product go up or down because the price is double? Down. It goes down. That is the law of demand. Watch this. What if the price is 50% off? What happens to your demand? It goes up. Oh, my goodness. This is why so many people love economics. Because unlike politics that we talked about earlier in the first nine weeks, economics is pretty black and white. Okay. So what is the law of demand? As price goes up, demand goes down. As price goes down, demand goes up. Isn't that a list of color, like inflation or something? Um, yeah, there, there can be reasons. So Brooke is asking about this word called inflation. So there can be reasons why prices would go up. One of the reasons why prices would go up is because of this thing called inflation. Inflation is the rise in prices. There can be various reasons why inflation would occur, which we'll talk about later. We will be talking about that. Let me check my chat real quick. Somebody's. Uh, All right. Did you know there's actually a fifty million dollar bunker in a uh, like? Did I give it, I think I gave everybody enough time. I'm gonna go ahead and raise my definitions. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna go to number three. Number three is where the meat's at today. Okay. So let's go to number three. All right. So I know the definition of demand, the ability, willingness, and desire to purchase a product at a various price point. I know the law of demand. Um, the law of demand says as price goes up, supply uh, demand goes down and vice versa. So what is this now, this third question? This, again, I want you to put a little star beside this one, okay, in your notes or, or just at home. Now, for you guys at home, if you want to get a piece of paper out and take some, like, and do this on paper, you can. These are your notes. These are your notes. You're not necessarily, you're not turning these in necessarily. Okay. Um, so, but you're going to need it for the test as you've seen in the last test. Okay. All right. So what's the difference between the demand schedule and graph? Here we go. I'm going to do it in one word for you. The schedule is a table and the graph is a curve.
And again, you guys can do this at home if you would like. If you want to go to insert table two by two. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the price. Schedule of lightsabers. We're going to look at the price schedule of lightsabers. We don't need all those words. Toys R Us. You get them at Toys R Us, but Toys R Us went down. Those are kind of stuff. And then this is going to be quantity demanded. Uh, I don't know why I made my little chart so small. All right, table. Okay, we good? All right, so the price of lightsabers. Now, and so I'm using like a real life example here. So we went to Disney World over spring break. Like I told you that, right? And I'm plugging in so you guys don't know around me. And this is not the one we bought. I should have brought the one. I forgot. Uh, I should have brought the ones that they brought. I'll try to bring them tomorrow, okay? So my kids are Star Wars nerds because, you know, I'm raising them right. And we rode this ride. And then after the ride in Disney World, they get off the ride and they you know, Disney, it's like you pop out at a gift shop, right? Have you ever been there? All right. And so they're like all looking forward to this. They've been saving their allowance for a year for this moment. They pop out of the gift shop and there are lightsabers everywhere. And it's like, nyo, nyo, nyo. All right. and they're like, oh my God. And I was like, yeah, you know, this is what you've been, you know, da, 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 da. All right. So here we go. We got a hundred dollar lightsaber. This is, this is the lightsaber. Look, look. All right, so we got price point for this lightsaber. Just one lightsaber. It's not different ones. It's the same one, okay? $100. All right, and then let's go 75 50 and 25 for this red lightsaber. Again, this is the same lightsaber. It's just different price points. $25 for that lightsaber. I know. It's Disney. All right. So, I'm going to go to Walmart and get one for $5. At yeah, the most. I, I will bring in the one that you can get for $3. Yeah. All right. So we got this $100 lightsaber. Here we go. Right here. All right. Look, we're just pretending. Here. This, is, this is the actual one. But, all right. So my daughter, she goes and, and she runs over there and she picks it up. He goes, Daddy, I love it. I go, baby, it's your money. Like you've been saving all year. This is your allowance money. I don't care. All right. But it's a hundred dollars. Okay. She's like, but I love it. It's green and blah, 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 blah. Actually, she got the red one because she's got a little dark side. In her. I thought she was going to be Yoda for a second. Um, no, uh, uh, <laughs> so I go, it's your money. All right. So she gets one. But what if she'd gone down there? And popped out of the gift shop, and it was only this the same lightsaber was only $75. Would her demand, remember the definition, desire, willingness, and ability go up or down? Wait, just how much money does she have? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. okay. Then it would go up. Right, because we gotta obey. Good, Ash. We gotta obey the law of demand, right? So as price goes down, our demand for it is gonna do what? It's gonna go up, and we can symbolize that too. Okay. With numbers, right? Our ability, desire, and willingness can be symbolized through this number too. Like but how McDonald's, it? like how McDonald's, uh, how much money they were making went up after they started selling all their drinks for one dollar. Yep. There you go. So what if though she popped out of the gift shop and this lightsaber wasn't a hundred like it normally is, but it was two or it was one for fifty, essentially two for a hundred. Well, then she would be like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna buy, and let's just go crazy. I'm gonna buy four. I'm gonna buy for one for everybody in the whole family, and we'll go out at night and we'll battle at night. Uh, 
buy one for each of my hands and feet. Right. She didn't and buy this, one for me. I'm this sad. thing like gave her 25 bucks. She goes, oh my goodness, I'm gonna buy one for my neighbor Haley. And then Haley can come over and with the whole family can play. So I'm gonna buy six of them. Okay. Why am I getting left out? You're welcome. Well, I shouldn't have said that. You might actually show up. I'm playing, Cedric. All right, so now what we're going to do, so that's the table. So now what we're going to do is we're going to curve it out, okay? Now, I'm going to get really close because I bet there's somebody out there. The people that screw this up, I've been teaching this for a while, a long time, like before you were born. Pretty weird to think about that now. Every year, there's going to be one or two people that screw this up. They're not the ones that suck at math. It's going to be me. They're the ones that are really good at math. Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be me. You know why? Because they're like, I know how to do this. I'm and about to just, screw it up. Yep. And they, and they move on and they start charting and they start connecting dots and stuff. And then it's like, oh, wait, I messed something up. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it's flip flopped or whatever. Okay. So it's please. Like it's Please, we're almost done. Just hang in there for 10 minutes and watch what I do. A couple of tricks so that way you're not that person, okay? Wait, Don't wait, be wait, that person. Wait, wait, Mr. Gonzalez, doesn't it decrease at a decreasing <laughs> rate starting? Mr. Gonzalez, doesn't it decrease at a decreasing rate at 100 up at all the way on the top left and the one on the bottom left to the six on the bottom right? Um, no, not... And that's why I did that on purpose. I didn't want to decrease on the or decrease and increase at the same rates. Okay. Um, for who? For you. I'm trying to be that person that messes it up. Why won't you let me be the person that messes it up? All right. Somebody just came in the room. All right. Here we go. So we got Y and X axis. We're in economics class week. Uh, y is goes up and down. X goes is side to side. Yeah. But you don't need you don't even need to know that. This is all you need to know. I'm about to show you something. Uh, so we're going to label, we're going to go, this is going to be price. And this is going to be quantity. So let's go ahead and label our Y and X axis. Price and quantity. All right, now I'm going to do something that's so daddish, that is so awful, that is so corny, that it will be burned into your brains forever. All right. So the, the thing is, if you put price on the X axis, if you flip price and quantity, then your stuff is all gonna be wrong, right? So you gotta make sure that you remember that price goes here and quantity goes here. So you go okay. like this. I had I price said, on the left. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so you know how you go shoo wee when something smells or like shoo wee, shoo wee, okay? All right, we're right here. We're right here like this. Instead of shoo wee, we're gonna go PQ. You're making the exact graph I was saying of making, Mr. Gonzalez. You're making the exact graph that I was saying that we were going to make, and you're yeah. wrong. I cannot believe you. You said I was wrong. All right, here we go. So we got PQ. We're going to put this is obviously going to be zero. Now let's look at our num our prices here. All right. <laughs> It's a price range from $25 to $100. So sort of think about this, there's four of them and we could go by $25 increments, one, two, this, so this could be a hundred here. This would be 75 here. This could be 50, this could be 25, right? Sorry, does that look really? Oh, Mr. Please. Gonzalez, Mr. Gonzalez. Yeah, I, why did you call me wrong when this was the exact graph I was saying we were going to make? Uh, yeah. Maybe he misheard you. All right, here we go. All right, so now our quantities, our quantities are one through six. So we can just go by two, the two, four, six. So that means that should be one, three, five. We got one. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. Just give you another second here. And here I go. I'm gonna screw it up. <laughs> Don't start graphing. Don't do it. Don't start it. doing it. I'm doing it. 
<laughs> All right, so what we're going to do before we start is we're going to turn this zero into a skier. It's going to be decreasing at a decreasing rate. We're going to turn that zero into a skier. So go ahead and turn your zero into a skier. Does it not go like this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to take this skier. Let me put a little toboggan on. And we're going to take him up the ski lift. We're going to always go, right? PQ, Chewy, PQ. We're always going to start with price. PQ. So we're going to go up to this $100. See in the table, $100 price? So we're going to go up the $100 price. And we're going to go out to one. And he's going to ski down. So I'm gonna grab All right. Try. We're going to go up to the, take the skier, go up to seven, $75, see the right there on the table. And then we're going to go out to two, put a dot. Ski down. Go up to $50 ski lift. And we're going out to four. Okay, I would have done this right in the first place. Don't connect your dots. Don't do it. This is what go I want to do. Go, go up to $25, <laughs> out to six. What is connecting the dots doing? This is Don't okay. The, the way you connect the dots is with dashed lines because they are not equal to each other. Don't connect them yet. Yeah, you connect them with dashed lines because they're not equal to each other. <laughs> right, Mr. Right. Gonzalez? Hold on, hold on, Cedric, buddy. All right. So now remember how I told you PQ, shoe we, okay? All right. We're always going to start with the price. And in order to connect these dots, we're going to start with the dot that's closest to price. So put your pen or your cursor there on that dot. Now connect your dots. Which way are you going? You went down. Okay. So that's D for down, D for demand. D for down, D for demand. This is an inaccurate graph. No, it's accurate. No, because the prices are not the same. It, you. It doesn't have a lightsaber like they do not have a lightsaber at $99 or $98 or $97, or $96, or $95. It's a dashed line, not a full line. All right. So, yeah, no, but no, Cedric. So at each, so if it went down to $99, your desire and ability would go up just a little bit. Okay. It might be point, it be, might be 1.00001. You see what I'm saying? And then $98 would be 1.0002, okay? So as the price goes down, your desire and willingness and ability will go up. It might not go up to a whole quantity, all right, but it will go up in, in your desire and, and willingness and ability. Your ability- The only reason I'm saying it's wrong is because we only have, they don't have a lightsaber for $99. Of course your quantity and demand would go up, but if they don't have something for that, why would it be a, a whole line? All right, we'll talk after. We're, we'll talk afterwards. You're overthinking this, okay? You, yeah, th th you're overthinking it, okay? Don't, don't, don't try to get cute and overthink it, okay? All right. So we got D. We got our D curve, okay? Our down, our demand curve one. All right, it slopes down. The reason it slopes down is because of the law of demand. Now, this is what people will do. All right, I'm going to erase this on your test. It used to be a state exam, but on your test, this is what you will see. Wait, so is ours not a state exam anymore? All right. So this is what you'll see. And then I'm going to ask you, which one? Is it A or is it B? Which one is the demand curve? Okay. B. Well, it's very easy to find this out. Go PQ, and then you see... You see, let's say, okay, well, let's take this point right here. If we start here, this is the closest point to price. We, we put our cursor there. Which way did we go? Uh, we went up. Well, so on Monday, you will learn that supplies goes up. All right? And this is the closest point to the de uh, demand curve here to the price. And so obviously B is the demand curve. A is the supply reason. curve. Eventually, we're going to get there. Now, I've gone over my time. I've gone over my time 
almost. I'm almost done with my time. I got like five minutes left. So let's go to four and six. All right, so you know what demand, the de definition of demand is. You know the law of demand. You know what the table of demand is, and you know how to curve or graph it out, okay? All right, you, you've seen it once. You're going to practice it a lot uh, tomorrow, okay? So what is individual versus market demand? Well, individual demand was my daughter's demand, her personal demand. Individual is your personal demand for a life saving. Well, you guys, your personal demand for this might be like, are you crazy? Like you pot, you paid $25 for this? Or a hundred, right? Uh, your personal demand might be zero. So what we got to look at is we got to look at market demand. The average demand of all consumers. Every kid that gets off that ride and sees this lightsaber. What average, the average demand for that. Okay, that's market demand. Okay, real simple, super simple, right? All right, and then here's the last one. The last one, I love this. All right, last one for the day here, utility. Utility, what is utility? Utility is the usefulness and satisfaction you get out of using whoops using the product utility is the useful and satisfaction you get out of using the product they bought these lightsabers and, and my son bought one too and they came home off of spring break and it was friday and they played outside all day with these and they were like, mom, dad, can we wait until it gets dark so it'll light up? And we were like, yeah. And then yeah. Saturday, Saturday, they did the same thing. They went outside and they played out. They were like out there for hours. And they played at the dark. Sunday, we didn't let them stay till dark because, you know, I mean, come on, go to bed. My point is, today, that spring break was a couple weeks ago, right? The first couple of days, their utility, their usefulness, and their satisfaction for this lightsaber was at its maximum. However, as the days go on, your satisfaction for all products is going to get a little less, right? Your new shoes that you buy, $100 pair, of, the first time they get a little scuff on them, right? You're like, oh my God, you stepped on my shoes. I see it all the time. I mean, everybody's here, right? The car, a lot of you guys have a car, all right? You got that car in the last year or so. Maybe you just got the car, all right? You buy the car. It's new to you, not new car, but new to you. So you say, you know what? I'm going to create some rules. No eating in my car, right? No eating in my car. That's a big one. Yeah, that lasts like two days. Exactly, it lasts two days. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, when I get home, I'm gonna take everything out of my car. I'm gonna keep it clean. On the weekends, I'm gonna wash my car. But then over time, your car turns into everybody else's car. There's fries in the floorboard and the console, the console's sticky because, you know, something spilled at one point. And then the back seat is just full of crap, okay? It's turned into your closet. Why does that happen to consumers, which we all are? Why does that happen? And that is because of, again, the law of this thing, diminishing marginal utility, which says, let's just start with over. Oops. Over time, the utility for a product Will go down. Pretty much 
this happens to every single thing, every single resource, really. Maybe only there's might be only one resource out there that can break the law of diminishing utility. And that might be love. Whereas over time, you might love somebody more. But not always. There's a lot of divorce out there. You are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next time you break up with somebody, just be like, listen. My diminishing, uh, I, we're, 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 you know, it's the law of diminishing marginal utility. I'm sorry. I just want, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> it's just your utility. It's your utility to me. That's what it is. All right. <laughs> no, no, do not say that. Do I just, not say I, that. I, Don't <laughs> say that. Mm -mm. All right. So that's where we'll stop. Don't get off yet. So tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, okay, this demand curve, why does it move around? There are reasons why. There are six reasons why it moves around. I'm going to show you why they move around, and then we're going to chart and, and move them around. Okay. Hey, right, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging in there. And I'll see you, you know, tomorrow. You like on Disney, Disney, where it's like, and you're watching Disney. All right, let's get into our debate, Cedric. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole with everybody because they might get confused about what we're talking about. But I, I see what you're saying, but what I'm trying to tell you is you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. But what about the other debate? Oh, uh, the I'll, I'll give you 25. <laughs> and did you see what I put in the chat that my I'll get a classic so my satisfaction satisfaction goes up with the price? Yeah, these 25 bonus points are gonna be the most satisfying bonus points you've had, but tomorrow they will be less satisfying. But no, I'm gonna get like a classic painting so my satisfaction goes up with the price. Now your satisfaction will not go up, but the price of the product might go up. So you might get, you're eventually not going to appreciate that painting hanging. Well, you might appreciate it, but you might not get as much satisfaction looking at it. Like the first time somebody buys a piece of art, they might like look at it for a lot. And then eventually they don't even notice it or they don't walk in and look at it every time. That's no, the law of finishing. No, but I'm going to be satisfied with the price up. going up is what I'm saying. Well, the price would go up because other people might want that painting. So they're not, they're not using it. You're the one using it. That's why, that's why like used cars, for example, that's why you can sell your used car to somebody. And then when you sell it, you're like, I can't believe they bought that. Well, it's new to them. But why not 50 bonus points? Because <laughs> you didn't say the word Kyber. Okay. Who can exactly say, know the exact name of the crystal without studying it for like 50 hours? Jack, say it. 